Hello and welcome to another episode of Outsmart Charles. I'm Charles Bennett, and uh, you can only see me from my tie up. Well, let's first meet our contestants a uh, freelance <laughs> illustrator from somewhere in California, Dave. Ooh, Dave. Yeah. Hello. A bird wrangler from somewhere in California, Bay. <laughs> Thanks. And an actor director from somewhere in California, Eric. <laughs> Eric. Let's take a look at tonight's categories. Children's literature. Take me to church. I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your lies. How do I? Really long words. The 19th century wasn't the American century, but here we go anyway. Food and dead wipers. <laughs> Big category. Hey. Oh, I get to pick. I'm confused by how many hosier lines are in here, so I'm going to go with children's literature. This stuffed bear, later of film, makes his home in Christopher Robin's Hundred Acre Wood. Is this like a what? Like, do I ask answer like Jeopardy, or am I just you, straight answer? You need not. You need not answer in the form of a question. Why are Faye and Eric's timers going down simultaneously? Wait, his name's Winnie the Pooh. I don't know if there's a timer. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is the correct answer. <laughs> this Doctor Seuss story features a character named the Knox, chicks with bricks, Ooh. and Tweedle Beetles. Is it still on me? Because I'm passing. Okay, and you pass to Eric. Uh, Knox and Socks. Uh, say that again. Knox and Socks. No. That makes sense. Oh. Dang. If it's to if it's to me, I'm gonna pass. Oh no. Well, Eric, uh, Eric got the closest. He was so close. It was Fox and Socks. Oh. Not to be confused with Fox News and Socks. <laughs> Is Tweedledee and Tweedledum are characters in this sequel to Alice and w in Wonderland. Um, I don't want to say it wrong. I just know it. Is it just through the looking glass? Through the looking glass is correct. Okay, phew. <laughs> and I believe the action is now on Eric. I will take food. Good choice, Eric. Mutton is a term for meat from this animal. What is mutton from? Um, I'll go with uh, cow. Mm -hmm. That's incorrect. Dang. Mutton, mutton. Well, there's like mutton chops, uh, mutton, 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 mutton. Is it, uh, is it like a deer? No, that's venison. Oh. Faye. Is it sheep? It is sheep. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, Eric's going to know this one. Oh, yeah. Animal <laughs> fries can be found on the secret menu of this establishment. In and out. That's correct. Mm, oh, no, I want in and out. That's what a hamburger's <laughs> all about. Main ingredients of this southern, southern dish include... Andouille sausage, shrimp, rice, and celery. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, come down. Uh, pass. Yeah. Dave. Okay, main ingredients of the southern dish include Andouille sausage, <laughs> Andouille sausage, shrimp, rice, and celery. The French would be so proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. Um... Let's see. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's um, uh, man, I'm gonna hear it and I'm gonna be upset, but I'm gonna have, I'm gonna pass. Out of time. Oh, I also pass. I have no idea. I do not cook. <laughs> Nobody could come up with jambalaya. Oh yeah, that's totally it. I was like gumbo. Gumbo, I know when Eric said thing. gumbo, my mind was like, yeah, that's all, that's it. That's all I can think of now. Dang it. Yeah. But there's one key ingredient to gumbo that I did not mention. What? Gumbo traditionally requires okra. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okra. And Dave, uh, the action's on you. Where would you like to go? Let's do how do I. 
in this particular category, you need your answer should begin how do I something? I will tell you how you do that and you shall answer with how do I whatever it is. Get on the 60 East, take that to I-15 North and stay on I-15 for about 250 miles. How do I get to Palm Springs? No. Darn. Hey, you want to try this one? 60 goes to Pomona, 15. From there, how do I... It's going to... How do I go to Sacramento? No, that's on I-5. I don't, hmm. I don't drive. Eric. How do I get to Vegas? How do you get to Vegas? Uh, well, of course. What the? I've only yeah. been to Vegas once in my adult life. I, th I thought north too hard. I was like, yeah, north, straight up. Let's go. I've driven there a lot of times uh, th with that exact route. Oh, boy. Well, th there is generally only one route. You got to get on the 15 and stay on it. Yeah. 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 Well, where were you when I was answering the question? <laughs> I was hosting. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Dave, maybe uh, maybe this oh. one might be a little more up your alley. Shake, Shake or stir together three shots of gin and a shot of vermouth. Uh, how do I make a how do I make a martini? That's correct. Oh, hey! Bombard hey. a radioactive element with free electrons. Bombard a radioactive element with free elect. How do I? How do I build a bomb? John, are we gonna take that? Oh, uh oh. All right. Uh, how do I build a? How do I build a fusion reactor? Mm. I I think we'll give him that. No um, way. What we were looking for is how do you start a nuclear chain reaction? By the way, oh. if you said mm -hmm. how do I explode a bomb instead of how do I build one, I probably would have given it to you. I, I'm okay with people knowing that I don't know that that well. That's probably good. So, it's back to you, Faye. Oh my goodness. Um, really long words scares me. I'm. We'll go with the first of "Take Me to Church." Take me to church. Okay. Each of these questions will concern churches. Darn it. <laughs> I'm hoping it wasn't. The main cathedral in London bears the name of this saint, a major player in the Acts of the Apostles. I feel like it's a G. Oh my gosh, I should know this. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass. I'm not even gonna risk a guess. Eric. I will pass because I am the lowest and I don't want to risk going lower. <laughs> Dave. I mean, I want to say St. Peter's. St. Peter's is in Rome. London is St. Paul. Paul, oh, okay. Well, I knew it was a P. You had a P, yes. I thought you though. It's, it's where you can find the Dome of the Rock. Oh. What's the Dome of the Rock? <laughs> oh. Uh, it's a dome, and there's a rock under it. Nope, pass. I picked the wrong category. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. I will also pass. <laughs> Dave. Jerusalem. That's correct. Boom! Oh, hey. Good job. Thank you. I read a book once. What if by land, two if by sea is associated with this Boston meeting house? Oh, I, I know this is Paul Revere, but that's all I got. So that's a solid path also. Okay, we're looking for the uh, meeting house. <laughs> I will also pass. <laughs> Dave. Oh, you know, unfor <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass as well. Okay, nobody could, I believe I've been here half a zillion years ago last time I went to Boston. Uh, nobody could think of Old North Church? Oh, even you saying it, nope. I wouldn't have been able to no, guess that. No, never heard no. of that before in my never life. Never heard that ever. Eric, where do you want to go? 
Uh, I will take at the Shrine of Your Lies. The Shriners run a network of these for disabled children. Ooh, pass. Dave. Uh, charities. Uh, do we want him to be more specific? Okay, yes, this is uh, more specific. The Shriners, the Shriners run a network of these. I guess it was the, the, a network of these. The Shriners run a network of these for disabled children. Um, I, I guess I'll have to pass them. Hey, what are the Shri what what are the Shriners? The guys with the funky hats who and have the commercials raising money for this. Yeah, and they drive little cars around in, in like Fourth of July parades. Big hats, little cars. Big hats, little cars. I think I just changed universes. Okay, um, I'm gonna <laughs> pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's not both <bold> <laughs> uh, We went 0 for on a on a low point question. You haven't heard of these Shriners hospitals? Oh, mm, no. maybe. <laughs> oh, really? Shrine Auditorium once hosted basketball games for this team of Kobe Bryant and Jerry West. Ah, uh, great sport. Ah, uh, the Lakers. The Lakers. At uh. one point, there was a. Uh, there was a uh, loose ball, and uh, there was a Lakers player, I believe his name was Ray Felix, and he fell into the orchestra pit, diving for a loose ball. Nice. Also, fun fact, the Shrine Auditorium is where I uh, is where I got my Warren selfie. There is an orchestra pit on the basketball court? It's an auditorium. You know how oh. auditoriums are. They played on the stage. They played on stage. Oh. <laughs> Shrine Auditorium. They played on stage. Sure. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah. Guy was diving for a loose ball, fell off the stage, fell into the orchestra pit. Like Kelsey Grammer. Yikes. Fort McHenry National Shrine, where I've participated in a flag raising ceremony, is in this U.S. city. I will pass. Dave? Fort McHenry National Shrine flag raising ceremony USC. Um, I'm gonna pass. Faye? I don't even think I could tell you the state. I'm gonna pass. Fort McHenry is in Baltimore. That of course is the uh, morning, Baltimore. Okay, then. That of course is where the Star Spangled Banner flew. Uh Dave. Let's do the 19th century wasn't the American century, but here we go anyway. Why wasn't it the American century? Generally, that term is used to refer to the 20th century. In 1886, this American icon was installed in New York Harbor. Wow. Statue of Liberty. That's correct. John C. Fremont led the Bear Flag Revolt in the midst, in the midst of this mid 19th century war the S Spanish American war no Faye. I didn't I oh. not me I'm, I'm gonna hear this I'm gonna know but I don't not there so pass I will also pass you were fairly close Dave it was the Mexican American war oh that's not going to sound bad. Um, can you cut that out? <laughs> this organization originally started as a utopian community before settling down to making silverware. Oh, it's me. This organization originally started as a utopian community before settling down to make silverware. Oh, do you know what? I, this organization originally started as a utopian community. Oh, man. I actually saw a thing on this. Hold on. Let me. This... I believe in you, Dave. Organization originally started as you. Man, I think they did a 99% invisible thing on this. Uh, I'm going to have to pass. I'm going to have to pass. I'm sorry. Hey. I can't think of a single company that even makes silverware. I just go to Dollar Tree. So I'm also passing. <laughs> Eric. I've had the same silverware for the last 10 years. So I'm Anybody ever heard of the Oneida Company? No. Mm, no. The Oneida Company 
It oh, okay. was originally yeah. founded as a utopian colony, but then that didn't work. So they decided, hey, maybe we should make uh, try making money making silverware instead. And, and, and believe it or not, the, their corporate meetings are still held in the utopian community's meeting house. So I believe it's... Capitalism it's, uh, gets to us all in the end. Uh, I believe it's it's time for uh, us to uh, pay for my uh, new pairs of socks. So uh, we're going to take a commercial break and come back and learn more about our contestants. Outsmart Charles is made possible by viewers like you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and... Share our link to help grow our channel. If you want to further support the show or have access to bonus content, subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash outsmartcharles. Welcome back to Outsmart Charles. Dave, <laughs> tell me about that uh, painting behind you. I got this off of Society6, and it's, a, it's actually a photograph of a color wheel. And I draw pictures for a living. And when I got this, I thought, man, where did it all start? Me having to make a bunch of color wheels in school. So it kind of is my little reminder of like, you know, the, the foundation of like where we all got to start, which is just some paint and a round circle of paper and making these color wheels for semester after semester after semester after mm -hmm. semester. And so when I'm drawing, uh, when I'm drawing over at the table, sometimes I like to look at it and be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those. And I'm not making you now. But I had to. And now <laughs> we don't. It's good. Now, Faye, that is a uh, portrait of uh, birds of some sort behind you, is it not? It is. Um, this is actually from Lush. <laughs> um, but these are lovebirds. And my bird is a lovebird, which I also have my tattoo of, which I, if I can get it in the screen. Question mark. If it wants to. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yes, there we go. Um, this is Buzz. He's in his cage right now because he's being a bad boy. But usually he's with me. <laughs> he's nine years old. He's an old man. Uh, Eric, you're uh, in your car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Um, so I had a uh, COVID test because I was, I'm filming something. Um, I'm doing background on Perry Mason. And Ooh. I had a COVID test. And I figured I would have enough time to get home. I, I did not. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm, I better pull over somewhere so I can uh, do out Smart Charles. So Making it work. Yeah, At I'm, least your car is very clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks real good. You guys can see. <laughs> You're not seeing what's all next <laughs> to me. Now, now, when we filmed this, uh, we were still in a pandemic. Uh, I, I presume that when this airs, uh, we'll still be in a pandemic. I, I know people want to believe we're not in a pandemic. We we still are. We I still think that's are. a safe bet. So are the, are the lines still long for the testing? No, I just uh, made an appointment, drove up, and got out in like five minutes, if even that. Mm -hmm. I did one a couple weeks ago, and it was really fast. I get them. I get them at work. Oh, that's I, nice. I am lucky. So far, I have never tested positive. I, I do Woo! not know. I do not know what I have done to deserve such good fortune. I have not left this room in uh, seven years, so don't even know what it's like out there. Is every everything's going okay? It's not worth coming outside. Okay, I'm gonna stay here then. <laughs> Faye, I believe it's it's your board again. Okay, let's do really long words. Really was, long I'm words. I'm afraid of it, but. I don't know what the other two are going to be. This long, atrocious exclamation hey, good is the title of a Mary Poppins song. Oh, the answer is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I That's think. correct for double that. points. Nice. Nice. Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau were of this philosophical persuasion. <sighs> I've only taken one philosophy class in my life, and I'm gonna be honest, I did not pay attention. I know, I know the last name Thoreau, but I know nothing else about passing. Uh, is it, uh, is it stoicism? Uh, that is, may be applicable, but it is not the word we're looking for. There's a mm. more common word used to describe these two gentlemen. I am, uh, I'm in the same boat as Faye. I took one philosophy class <laughs> and I also know the name 
throw, so I will pass. <laughs> I, 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 I also took one philosophy class in college, but I also took a political theory class in college mm-hmm. where I, Didn't do that. I read Walden. It was from the, the same guy who taught Obama political theory. Now, would I help you? Would it help if I mentioned the word meditation? No. No. That is, that's just bringing me towards the uh, direction with yoga, and I know that's nothing to do with it. The answer is transcendentalism. Oh, I know that word. Okay. I know it. I wouldn't have gotten it. No, I'm uh, I've, I've heard that once or twice, but definitely would never have said it out loud. This 16 letter word is the act of performing sleight of hand. Oh, man. I should know this. I love magic. Um, I feel like Eric's gonna know this too. No, I thought I did, but it's not what I thought. <laughs> Counted it out. Um, how many letters does illusion have? <laughs> no, pass. It's, it's less than 16. It's less than 16. Pass. <laughs> Dave. I, too, love magic, but I have no idea what this is, so I'll have to pass. Okay, I don't feel as bad now. Eric? Uh, I will pass because deception is not 16 letters. <laughs> deception is not 16 letters. However, prestidigitation is. Oh, oh, what? Oh, man, so glad. Prestidigitation. God, it was on the t- my tongue. Definitely a very high-ranking word in Scrabble. We know it now, though. Now, Dave, do you want dead white guys or worship like a dog? Mm, let's go dead white guys. After retiring from the presidency, this man went on a two-year African safari and wrote a book about it. Retiring from the presidency. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, um, uh, Roosevelt. Yeah. Which one? Uh, uh um... Not Franklin. Uh, uh, I cannot believe I'm forgetting this right now. Uh, um, wow. That's a bummer. Um, uh, we're not going to give it to him, are we, John? Or not, not, Franklin. Not, not, not Franklin. Not Franklin. <laughs> yeah. Theodore, Theodore, oh, Theodore now Roosevelt, Eric has Theodore the answer. He got it. He got it. Dave finally got it. Oh, Theodore good. Roosevelt. Okay. By the way, uh, somewhere in that glass bookcase back there is a copy of the book he wrote, African Game Trails, which I have read. I wonder if he wrote it with a big stick or a big pencil. This early 20th century economist believed the solution to a depression was substantial government intervention. Pass. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'll pass too. That's, I'm probably going to hear it and be like, yeah, that's the answer. I will. I don't even have that much faith in myself. But mm-hmm. if there's one thing I care less about than dead white guys, it's dead white economists. So it's also going to be a pass for me. <laughs> okay, nobody. I'm. I'm sure you've heard of this person. He he often comes up in economic debates. Anybody ever heard of John Maynard Keynes? No. Maybe I don't think so. I think maybe. No, definitely not. This late 19th century historian came up with the frontier thesis. Oh, Charles knows this one. Uh, I'm going to have to pass. I will also pass. Don't even need to highlight me. You can just pass. <laughs> Nobody can think of Frederick Jackson Turner. A dead nope. white guy. Ironically, nope. when I was younger, for the longest time, for some reason, I thought Frederick Jackson Turner was black. But turns out, Frederick Jackson Turner, a dead white guy. One of mm. the mo- foremost American historians. Eric, that means that I'll worship like a dog is Let's yours. Break Let's do I'll it. I'll worship like a dog. And I think once you find out what this category is about, you'll regret, all of you will regret not picking it. I this think category. I know, but I wasn't sure. So I was too afraid to risk it. Let's- what we got. It's this, about is Faye. this is about dogs. dogs. <laughs> uh, it, Faye. Uh, this racer is also is also the name of a gin and juice cocktail and a traveling bus line. Greyhound. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Ray. 
This breed, whose name refers to a Canadian region, is a common breed of seeing eye dog. Um, okay, hold on, let me think. Uh, um, uh, uh, pass. Faye? I don't know Canadian geography. Um, but I'm sure you've heard of this dog. Um, what seeing eye dogs have I seen? I think you're out of time. Yeah, that's fine. Pass is fine. <laughs> Dave. Oh, I am definitely passing. Okay. <laughs> you have probably heard of a Labrador Retriever. Oh. Oh. You may have forgotten that Labrador is a region in Canada. Or yeah, never knew. London Labrador. <laughs> Which is my case. Definitely that one. Both Wishbone and my dog Spunky were breeds of this digging dog. Jack Russell Terrier. That's correct, and I believe that gives you the game. Oh my gosh, wow, good job. Whoa! Dude. Dude. Really come down to a Jack Russell Terrier. It's wow. because I worship <laughs> Wishbone as a kid, and I wanted a Jack Russell more than anything. And I, I had a Jack Russell Terrier, and I did watch Wishbone when I was younger. Eric, uh, on the strength of the Worship Like a Dog category, you have advanced to the final round. Oh, Ooh, boy. Good job, Eric. Hey. Nice job, Eric. Thank you. And uh, we're going to take another uh, commercial break. And when we come back, Eric will try to outsmart me. Oh, boy. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to embarrass myself for this one, at least a little bit less. <laughs> Think you can outsmart me? I don't think so. But if you want to try, go to bit.ly slash outsmartcharles and fill out our contestant submission form. We're always looking for new challenges. Welcome back to Outsmart Charles. Eric is here to compete against Charles in categories that they have selected for themselves. Uh, and those categories tonight are U.S. Vice Presidential Winners and Losers, 1850s in America, Disneyland Resort Parks, Shakespeare Plays, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Eric, you have first choice. Where should we go? I'll take the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is great. This is, a, this is the most popular category picked by contestants, but has yet to be played uh, because you were the first contestant to pick this to make it to the final round. In 2008, Marvel Studios released Iron Man, but it was this character's appearance in the post credit scene that signaled the beginning of the MCU. Nick Fury. Nick Fury is correct. The titular Civil War in the third Captain America movie was fought over the signing of what document named for a fictional Eastern European country? The Sokovia Accords. Correct. The first three phases of the MCU center around Thanos collecting six Infinity Stones. Name those six stones. Soul, mind, power, reality, time. Hold on, I know all of them. Soul, mind, power, reality, time, space. That is correct. Yeah, that was a, uh, a tricky one there because there are a lot to remember, but uh, they're pretty prominent in there. So, um, Of course, space from the Tesseract, mind stone from Loki's Scepter and Vision. Reality Stone, the Ether, Power from the Orb, Time, the Eye of Agamotto, and Soul, uh, re retrieved on Vormir. Or Yeaton, something one you love. Yep. I thought Vormir was a character in Lord of the Rings. All right, in the first three MCU phases, in phase one through three, only three movies have one person credited as writer-director. What are those three movies and what two people directed them? Hold on, let me double. In the first three MCU phases, only three movies have one person credited as writer director. Um, Winter. So oh wait, hold on. Only three movies have one person credited as writer director. What are those three movies, and what two people directed them? Um. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Um. 
in the first three MCU phases, only three movies have one person credited as writer director. Um, okay, I'm going to go with uh, Iron Man and Iron Man Two with um, John Favreau. Uh, three movies and two people, so you've got one more movie and one more person. Okay, let me think. Not Ant Man. Uh, Avengers. Joss Whedon. All right. So those are, for those answers, that is not a uh, complete correct answer. There is a complete answer though. Uh, so I'll move on to Charles for the steal. Don't want to tip him off. Uh, I have no idea. So I'll just stick with Iron Man one and two by John Favreau. And uh, I don't know. Did did J J Abrams write and direct? Uh, Anything in the MCU? Not yet. Uh, so, Eric got the uh, Joss Whedon for the Avengers correct. He also is credited for writing and directing uh, Age uh, of Ultron. And I James know. Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, I thought it was Volume 1 as well, and I double-checked it, and there was uh, another writer uh, credited on that. But Volume 2, he got full control. Nice. And of course, they, you know, these are written by committee too. They've, I'm sure they have other people contributing and writing on them as well. But uh, as far as the credits go. All right, that was a tricky one, but I've got one more that's a little trickier. How is that possible? In phase one through three, seven characters were recast and played by multiple actors, not including flashbacks. I only need you to name five of those characters. Bruce Banner, uh, Terrence Howard, um, Character names. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Bruce Banner. Uh, Rhodey. Um, who was? Let's see. James Rhodes. If you want the full correct name. Um, technically speaking, the Red Skull was replaced. Um, let me think. Let me think. Who else has been replaced in the MCU? Um, those are the Ooh. main oh wait 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 Fendril uh, from Thor Fendril from Thor got replaced who else has been replaced you know I should also say uh, I, I wrote not including flashbacks but looking at my questions here um, I should say not solely for the purposes of flashbacks Mm -hmm. um ah that's all i got all right so not gonna throw out a um any any fifth guess there um okay hold on let me think let me think let me think technically speaking thanos was not originally portrayed by josh brolin in his cameo in the first avengers and that does it. That is five correct uh, answers there. Um, the other ones, uh, Cassie Lang, um, the uh, ah, yeah. Ant-Man's daughter, uh, because of the time jump, uh, recast her there. Um, and yes, Howard Stark, uh, played by uh, two different actors uh, in the MCU, ah. connect, uh, especially with uh, counting in Peggy Carter uh, and... Uh, yeah. You mean Agent Carter. Agent Carter. Yes. You um, mean Captain Carter. <laughs> Captain. Uh, yeah, I had multiple actors playing, playing her. I there. like that show. I like that show. That was a good one. Um, all right. I, I, I like that you pulled that out. Thanos was a yeah. Thanos is a fun one because he wasn't uh, cast yet, and then Red Skull being recast later. I love the uh, the Rhodey moment as uh, when he shows up and. Yeah, I, I, his exact words because I showed this to Chelsea. Oh, right day is look it's me i'm here let's deal with it and move on <laughs> vice presidential winners and losers this vice president wrote that he was victimized by disney's liberal agenda promoting women in the military through the animated film mulan when did mulan come out When did Mulan? I think Mulan came out in 1990. Is it Al Gore? Oh, sorry, it's not Al Gore. 
Eric for the steal. I'm going to take a stab and say Dick Cheney. Ooh, it's not Dick Cheney. Yes, he wrote about this before he was vice president, so the timeline screws up there, but this did come up uh, a lot during the uh, 2016 election cycle. Uh, that was Mike Pence. Oh! Uh Oh, it was the revival, Mulan. No, he, he, this was an older article that resurfaced during his uh, his vice presidential run, um, but is still out there. Uh, when he, it, you can read the full text. He was uh, victimized by uh, the original animated film Mulan. This vice presidential loser performed "Baby Got Back" as a bear on The Masked Singer. Vice presidential loser. Oh, yeah, right. And, uh, Mass Singer, wasn't she? Uh, what was the name I cut out there? Sarah Palin! Sarah Palin is correct. And that was the moment I stopped watching The Mass Singer. <laughs> well, good, which means you missed the part where Rudy Giuliani was on Mass Singer. I know that hasn't even aired yet. That just leaked. This vice president pressured a student to misspell potato and later in his memoirs blamed the school. Jay Dan Fourth Quail. Yep. This vice presidential loser made a bigger impact in the courts ending Jim Crow laws after being nominated by the man he lost his last presidential primary to. God. Interesting. Give me a minute here. I'm thinking. You got a little time. You got any guess? Earl Warren. There you go. Pulled it out. Earl right Warren. There. Earl Warren is correct. I was going to be surprised if that one's that you close there. to being vice president. If Dewey had defeated Truman, he would have been vice president and not Supreme Court Chief Justice and I probably mean, would have drifted into obscurity. I pretty much only think of this vice presidential loser as a Viagra spokesman and family guy jokes saying. Uh, I pretty much only think of this vice presidential loser as a Viagra spokesperson and Family Guy joke saying his own name repeatedly. Let's see. I don't watch Family Guy. Is it Joe Lieberman? It is not Joe Lieberman. Eric for the steal. All right, I'm going to take a stab at this because I know he repeated his name a lot at one point. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Bob Dole is correct. Yeah, do, do you remember the uh, Viagra commercials oh, yeah, with Bob Dole? Oh, yeah, right, of course. Bob Dole lost the 1976 vice presidential race and the... Uh, I, I and the and I I'd forgotten that it that it could be somebody who had a long career after losing as vice president. Honestly, like I didn't even know he ran for vice president. I was like, <laughs> he ran for president, but I just kept hearing him say Bob Dole in my head and like nodding off and falling asleep. So I was like, I'm gonna stab at it. Bob, Bob Dole, Bob Dole, Bob Dole. Bob Dole just Bob likes to hear Dole. Bob Dole talk. I'll go with Disneyland Resort. While a 2020 World Happiness Report ranked Finland as the uh, at top, Disneyland begs to differ with what official tagline? Happiest place on earth? That is correct. Many newer attractions pay tribute to the ones they've replaced. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh has mounted animal heads from what musical attraction? The Country Bear Jamboree. That is correct. Have you seen those in there? I, you know, I can never find them. It's, I think maybe uh, for the Heffalumps and Woozle scene, you go through some doors, then look backwards. Gotcha. I think that's where Had I'm... that? Backwards. John, had that opened the last time we were at Disneyland? Uh, the Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, that was, was there. that new? No, that's been there for, for a bit. And those heads are creepy. 
Um, but they were mounted heads in the original version. It's not like they mounted the heads of the bears or anything. On what date did Disneyland first open with a televised event on ABC? All right, I feel like I'm gonna screw this up a little bit, but I'll just take a stab. Uh, July 17th. And the year? 1955. That is correct. Oh, what? I have Ooh, a great Scott, Marty. We got to get you back to 1955. 1950, I knew, but like the only reason I was remotely able to remember is because I've worked the opening uh, like celebrations before. The way that I remember that is a really weird way, but um, one of the trolleys in uh, uh, California Adventure is mm -hmm. 717. There are the only two quote unquote rides in Disneyland Park. I'd like to personally thank your wife because uh, her and I were talking about this the other day. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and Big Thunder Mountain, the wildest ride in the wilderness. That is correct. It is a favorite favorite uh, piece of trivia. When I was originally uh, taught that, it was only that there was one ride. Many in the the parks uh, do not like to refer to them as rides uh, coming from, They're from Walt. They're attractions. Ride is something you just go on passively. What popular commercially produced snack chip was invented in Disneyland? Commercially popular produced snack chip. Um, you know, I don't know, but if I can't lose any point, uh, I'm just going to take a wild stab and say Fritos. It was not Fritos, Charles. Uh, I don't know either. Is it Sun Chips? No, uh, Eric was close with Fritos uh, because I think the namesake of the restaurant at the time was a Frito uh, Cantina there, but that was Doritos. Doritos. Doritos invented in Disneyland. All right, Charles. Um, let's see if you can catch up here. I can't. Let's do, well, don't, don't worry think about. I think that. I have been math. Don't worry about the math. I think I've been mathematically eliminated. Now I'll just make a damn fool of myself and see how many I miss in 1850s America. Millard Fillmore was the last president to be a member of this party while in the White House. Last Whig. Yes. In 1855, this American poet published Leaves of Grass, later featured in Dead Poet Society and Breaking Bad. Walt Whitman. That is correct. This 1854 Supreme Court decision ruled that the Constitution was not meant to include citizenship for people of African descent. Are you sure you mean, are you sure it's 54 and not 57? It might be 57. Let's see. The decision is the, the main you're part. Probably, you're probably thinking of the Dred Scott decision. All right. Maybe I'll uh, edit the year in that one post there. Um, it was 57, John. I believe you. I think I, I think that was a typo uh, because of uh, the next question. I think it just got copy pasted in a weird way. This 1854 act effectively repealed the Missouri Compromise. The Kansas Nebraska Act. Although you know what officially repealed it? Uh, tell us, Charles. The Dred Scott decision. Oh, all right, all right. You haven't been stumped yet on these ones. Uh, let's try so this. So you'll just have something completely obscure that'll stump me, and I'll make a damn fool of myself. We'll try. On May 21st, 1856, Douglas County Sheriff Samuel J. Jones led an attack on this town, sparking conflict later known as Bleeding Kansas. That is probably when they burned down Lawrence, Kansas. That is. All right, you made a, a good attempt at getting back there. Uh, just 10 points shy, but Eric has outsmarted Charles. Time. God damn it, if I'd known Bob Doe, Bob Doe, Bob Doe, Bob Doe, Bob Doe. Thank God for Bob anyway, Doe. Eric, you've outsmarted me, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, I would like to thank Stezzy for a uh, wildest ride in the wilderness uh, because her and I talked about that two months ago. And so when that popped up, I was like, thank you. I adore you right now. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gotten that. Well, thank you everybody for playing and tune in and tune in next week for another episode of Outsmart Charles.